I'm an old man, rich Amazonian pet. Rap game, rich Amazonian pet. Old man got money and didn't do shit. Let me say I made a mill from an 80 inch grids with a 7 inch clock and a 20 inch Hi, John here. Today we're going to take a look at how to make this animation and this background render inspired by the upcoming Mortal Kombat movie. I'm really hyped for this movie, guys. Now, before we start, you can find the timestamps in the description if you're interested in only some specific parts of this video. In the first part, we're just going to model and texture the sword. Part 2 is about a little secret that I think not all of you may know. This will change the way you look at the build modifier. Third part is blocking out the background scene and lastly, we'll set up the scene and the sword for the final render in Eevee, because we're poor here and we can't afford any RTX 390. Okay, so we'll start with making something similar with Sub-Zero's sword. Mine didn't come out looking exactly like the one from the movie, but I kinda like the final result. You don't have to make a copy of it, just get inspired by the scene or make something cooler. Alright, let's begin with the default cube. Usually it's pretty fucking useless, but today this little guy is going to be our main focus. Look at the reference image and try to replicate the rough shape and size. Just extrude, scale and move until you get something that you like. Add the subdivision surface to see what that looks like. I recommend using a level 3 subdivision. This will be useful for the displace modifier. Add a new texture and in the texture menu change the type to clouds. Then in the menu you'll find the colors panel. Just play around with the brightness, contrast and size of it, until you get something that looks icy enough. For me, after playing around with the settings, two displace modifiers achieved something that looked interesting enough. If you have two displace modifiers, make sure you give them two different textures, otherwise there won't be any good changes in the mesh. Now, some more scaling and moving to make it look more uniform, and then add the ice material. You can check out my video on how to create that material in 3 minutes, or you can opt for something more realistic if you want. Also, if you want the eyes to look a bit blockier, go into the Sculpting tab, activate Dinotopo and switch the Detail type to Brush Detail. Basically, the more you zoom out, the less polygons your mesh is getting, with whatever brush you've used. So just go around and click randomly until you get something that looks like a Mortal Kombat 4 character. Oh, this game was the real shit back then. Alright, now here's a little secret that makes the build modifier 10 times more interesting. Usually the build modifier is based on the vertices creation order, so from the first one to the last one created. Here's a quick example. We can change this order to a few different options, for example using the 3D cursor to sort the elements based on the direction. Just add a cube and move it in the direction you want your animation to start. To move the 3D cursor, press Shift S and cursor to select it, or you can just press Shift and right click. Now tap into edit mode, and up here under the mesh options you'll find the sort elements menu. Make sure you have everything selected and select Cursor to Distance. Remember to change the element type from edges to faces every time you do it in this corner menu. This is really important guys, so now go back into object mode and enjoy this cool effect. Alright, let's move a little faster right now. Do the same process for the sword. Move the 3D cursor, select everything, mesh, sort elements and 3D cursor. Change the faces and we're good to go. You can also add the solidify modifier to fill the emptiness inside of the sword. Just make sure that fill and only rim options are selected. Man, I do wish the solidify modifier filled the emptiness inside of me as well, but... Oh, um, sorry. Once you're done with the sword and you're happy with the result, hide the object and start working on the background scene. You can add the plane for the ground. Duplicate and mirror it on the other side to get the walls. By now you should have in mind what the room is going to look like, so if you don't, step back for a second and think about the macro details that you're going to put in your room, like those pillars, the roof, windows and etc. I started adding some materials early on, just to see how things are looking. It's all about blocking out the big shapes. 
You can also start moving your camera so you can have a better perspective on your scene and you'll also know where to add more details. For the materials, I'm using KitOps, which is a free add-on, and the EV material system, which only costs 25 bucks, includes over 100 materials and it's ready to use. It saves me so much time, it's worth every penny in my opinion. You can find the link in the description. This is an affiliate link, which means I get paid if you decide to buy the product using my link. But hey, don't worry about it, you won't be paying any extra money. So. I also played a bit with the lighting, just to see what this looks like. Then I modeled a fast lamp and duplicated it a few times. Another free add-on that I use a lot is Blender Kit, which comes with Blender. You can turn it on in the preferences and start using it right away. Just make sure to check free models first, obviously. Then add some random objects. You can search for whatever you want. I opted for some old looking models to fit the atmosphere like some chairs, barrels, a rusty bed, a hammer, and my favorite one, a bucket. And this big as boiler or whatever that thing is. Also, don't forget about the volumetrics. Then I modeled some rails for more details. I have a video on how to make rails in 2 minutes. Feel free to check it out if you struggle or lose too much time with them. You can also separate some parts, rotate them, use the spin tool and then bridge some edge loops. Alright, so we're done with the modeling, now let's make this room a little bit cooler. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> oh, sorry for that. Just add a weird shape with ice material, make it look like a pile of ice. Then using a plane with subdivision and a displace modifier, give this some cool looking spikes. Again, you'll find everything in the description. Once you're done, duplicate everything and place them into random parts. For example, on the ground, rails, lamps, ceilings, chair, windows, basically everywhere. And a really good time saving tip. Make sure the subdivision has the same level in the viewport and in the render mode. The displace modifier will work differently with two levels of subdivision instead of three. So yeah, I had to change everything manually. Add some more lights to the scene wherever you think they look good, like above the spikes, and make them light blue. Alright, now bring back the sword, see what this looks like. Very important step here, remember to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflection and the underneath refraction setting. Then in the materials tab, scroll down to settings and enable screen space refraction. The only setting you should change in here is the refraction depth. Finally, add some animations to the sword and the camera. Here's a bonus tip for following up until the end. You can see what your animation looks like by selecting view in the top menu, and then viewport animation. It only takes a few seconds and you can see the animation with the true frames per second. And that's it guys! Make the final adjustments to the lights and the material, then hit render. Thank you for watching, I try to make this tutorial as fast and detailed as possible. My goal is to teach more in less time. I edit a lot of stuff and make multiple takes, just to deliver more quality to the few people that are watching these tutorials. If you're one of them, please press the subscribe button and maybe leave a comment. Let me know what I should improve in here. Hope you learned something useful and I'll see you in the next tutorial. I'm an old man, rich Amazonian pet. I'm an old man, rich Amazonian pet.